Welcome back to the 2022 Retail Technology Show. I'm Mike Giambattista. I'm here at the Freedom Pay block. And at the moment, I'm speaking with Dan Rogers, who is founder of QuickServe. And if you don't know, and I have to confess some ignorance here, I wasn't entirely familiar with what QuickServe does. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. But Dan, first of all, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. So, so even though we've just been through a lot of this, I would love it if you wouldn't mind expanding on what QuickServe is and does in this market. Yeah, so QuickServe is an, is an e-commerce platform for hospitality, um, and we, we enable operators to um, generate digital sales from customers that are either on their premise or, or off premise. Uh, so if they're on premise, um, we can facilitate mobile ordering through QR codes, NFC tags, we can facilitate pay at table, we also have a software product that um, customers can order on a third party bit of hardware like a self-service kiosk like you see in McDonald's and, and the like. And then for off-premise journeys we allow customers that are um, not on your restaurant floor or bar or catering establishment to order and collect or have something delivered to them. And really QuickServe is built on a powerful set of APIs that, that underpins it and that connectivity layer um, anybody can access and, and they can access it through our own channels or they can build channels on top of it and um, overall we've we're integrated to around 80 different hospitality technologies around the world that's a lot of tech it's, to track of. it's such a it's such a huge thing for for us but what it means though is we can really simplify the experience for operators we can take the complexity out of um, implementing digital solutions because in, in all likelihood, we can uh, we can interface with existing um, legacy tech, but it's not really like still up to date current technology, right? So we can take some of that complexity away, and then really kind of distill it down to how we manage that data that's running through a, a hospitality business. Um, Last year, QuickServe processed almost half a billion dollars in sales for our customers, um, and we served 23 million um, end consumers. Uh, so the people ordering from their home, when they're in a restaurant, um, all through the pandemic, we facilitated uh, operators to generate sales in, in what was a hugely challenging time for, for the industry. Sure. You mentioned a moment ago that the company is now 11 years old. Yes. So 2011, you started this. That's right. Uh, I wouldn't mind just talking for a moment about some of the changes you've seen in that period because, in my view, they've been radical. Uh, without, without a doubt. I, well, if I think back to 2011, 2012, when, I, when we, we came up with the idea of using a QR code in a bar or restaurant to order, um, and we went, went on to patent that solution um, and, and got the patent granted in 2015. But when, when, I went, when I was around talking to hospitality operators back then, I think most of them thought I had two heads. <laughs> and um, the, the, the whole industry has really kind of moved on, I think. And, and the pandemic, it was already accelerating towards that, but the pandemic um, kind of really got operators to see the, the possibilities around um, getting customers to order themselves. Customers are, were really already on that track. Um, but I, I think you're right, it's a, it's a completely monumental um, transformation that's happened uh, over the last te 10 years. Um, and a lot of it's been data driven. I think when, from an operator's perspective, the more they see value coming out from um, taking what was an anonymous transaction to one where they start to know about a customer, it makes a huge difference. Because um, a cash transaction is completely anonymous, right? Nobody knows who you are. And some people like that about cash, but like it doesn't, it doesn't in the long term make a better experience for you. And then a card payment is slightly more personal, but a digital payment from a person's own device you start to learn so much more about them. And I think that is what is really exciting with hospitality operators in particular, just the, the opportunities around what can be done, both from a service perspective and then also a, 
how do I know my customer? And, and payments is like the core, obviously. It's, it's, it's the core, it's exactly right. Yeah. So I, I'm interested because you interact with uh, a, a big chunk of the, of the ecosystem. That, that chain, uh, a lot of that is really within your purview. So um, you probably have a view to what's working and what's not working so well. You, you probably have a really good view to uh, where things are going, at least in the short term. So I'll put it this way, um, since uh, you have the perspective you do, within the hospitality world, what is it that you would like brands to know about now, or, or what should they be planning on in the next 12 to 24 months that means they should be having a conversation with you now? I, I, think, I think it's a really great question. I think it's, a, it's probably a wider, it's a probably quite a wide, wide question. I think the first thing I would say to operators is, um, we, as a business, we know that a lot of operators were bounced into certain solutions because they had to, they had to move really, really quickly during the pandemic. I think what we're seeing across our business is that operators are now starting to take a breath, like understanding the impact of what, what happened over the last two years. And then for the, the best, bit of, best bit of advice is kind of go back to your core values, your core brand values. Understand what it is that makes your brand exciting or makes your brand um, personal to customers and then try and build your digital journeys on top of that brand experience first. Um, lots of businesses had to throw away their brand experience in order to just get sales, right? right. Just to survive. Or at least walk away from it temporarily, ah, right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so now they've got a real opportunity. They know customers love digital. They know the data that they can get from, from it. They know how streamlined it's, it, it's become. And one of our brands in the UK um, really kind of grasp this concept of building on top of their brand experience. And rather than go full order and pay at table, they just looked at payment. Like, how do, you, how do I get a customer to easily pay their bill and walk out of a restaurant? Um, and we work with them and their back-end technology to make something that was really seamless, that pulled the customer data through into their existing um, technology. And that really kind of struck a chord with that operator. They saw how much value was in that. Now, 95% of all checks are paid on the customer's own mobile phone with a QR code. So there's hardly any pin entry devices in that, in that restaurant group at all. And um, I think that just goes to show the power of kind of digital transformation that can be achieved, but it has to be achieved from an understanding of what problems do I want to solve for my customers? And what did I learn from the pandemic in terms of customer behavior through a digital transaction? And then build something that represents your brand. So, so Quick Service is doing a lot more than, as we said, you know, it's not just a, a you know, payments provider, payment service provider, but there's, a, there's an entire, call it stack, that you're influencing. Uh, does Quick Serve actually, you know, do you help design tech stacks for, for retailers? Does it go that deep or, or is it more about the, the tech exists in-house already and QuickServe uh, comes alongside to make it more efficient, more customer friendly? How do... Yeah, I think, I think for, us, for us it's about trying to, trying to build those journeys on, on top of what other people already have. We don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater when someone wants to under, undertake a digital transformation. What we want to do is build on top of that great tech. You know, they've chosen Freedom Pay as a payment provider for a very good reason, right? Um, and we're partnered with Freedom Pay for a very good reason. It's good. It's really good underlying technology that sur that's able to surface customers lots and lots of data. And so, what what we we wouldn't necessarily try and influence a, a, a tech strategy. Of course, we've seen good and bad, and we can steer people away from things that don't work. Um, but I think the benefit that we've accumulated over the years is really understanding how tech fits together. Um, Oracle Point of Sale, for example, I think we're probably 
um, one of the longest Oracle point of sale partners um, around and we really understand that, that technology just as we understand Freedom Pace technology. And we do go deep when we, when we partner with people, which I think is a real advantage for, for us as a, as a business. Well, uh, you know, I think we touched on this before we, we went official here on live, but uh, I know that Freedom Pay uh, speaks really highly of you and QuickServe, uh, almost abnormally so. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think that's to your credit, and, I, and of course Freedom Pay, because uh, Freedom Pay, I think, takes the same approach. Um, when we're going to establish a partnership, we, we go deep, we make it meaningful, we try and understand the culture and motivations behind all that and build the tech around to support that. So um, that's a mouthful, but at the end of it, there's, a, there's a, a theme that's been servicing throughout the day, which has to do with partnerships and the idea that being an effective solutions provider is no longer s strictly a function of having the right tech portfolio so much as it's having the right, call it, partner portfolio. Yeah. I, I think if I reflect on Freedom Pay as a, as a partner, I think we share a lot of values around um, how we respond to customers. Like, like we respond, Chris has always been a kind of agile responder. Not not at all costs, but like we, we always try to be the, the tech leader in the room. Um, and then when you combine that with other people that share that vision of doing the right thing for the customer and, and building great technology that supports customer journeys and operators. That, I think, we our best partnerships are where we're aligned um, more strongly. And Freedom Pay is definitely one example of that, I would say, where, where we've got really good alignment on like our customer base and the, the type of technology that we, we want to do. And it's open as well. We will say when things aren't working and you'll tell us when things aren't working and when they're working great, we'll also kind of come together. So I, I think that is the, the true basis of why, why we're successful. Um, and obviously I think it makes, it makes it easier when our teams can work together much easier as well. And, uh, you know, I know that our team have great relationships with Freedom Pay teams, so. Good group of people. Haven't met your team yet, but I'm sure they are as well. You can definitely come up to Edinburgh. We'll take you out. You'll, okay, see, you'll meet them all. Well, Dan Rogers, thank you so much. Dan is, uh, just to reiterate, Dan is founder of QuickServe, longtime partner for Freedom Pay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Really appreciate it. And I'd invite our viewers to join us back at the hour, at the top of the hour, for another great interview with thought leadership in the payment space live from uh, Retail Tech Show 2022 in London.